Welcome back to my channel guys, this is Boost Hair Studio, Alejandro here and today I'm going to showcase the high taper mullet and I'm also going to be showing you how you do this really nice low simple beard that I did on my client here Gio and if you can kindly subscribe I would appreciate that, press the like button, share with your friends, press the bell button, I would again appreciate them, that will let me know that you guys enjoy my videos um, but without any further ado, let's jump right into it. We're gonna start by grabbing our babless trimmer and we're gonna set our guideline. And our highest point here is gonna be right at the corner right there and we're not gonna go any higher than that. But make sure you ball dial this area, make sure it's all completely even before we start another layer. And that's one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind that whenever we work with any number or any section, we wanna make sure we're completely 100% satisfied with that area before moving on but take your time, there's, there's no rush in this. If you learn how to be a bit patient, your haircuts are gonna be just that much better. And there's really no secret to this um, barber game as, as far as you know how to get the crispier haircut, but really a lot of times it just is giving yourself more time you know, to accomplish the haircut that you want. You know, a lot of mistakes I've made in the past would be, you know, I, I used to, take anywhere from half an hour to a haircut. And if you can do that, that's fine. But now I give myself about 40 minutes and that's just perfect to accomplish what I need to do. But as you saw, I grabbed my Babyliss Pro Foil shavers and I balled that out and jumping straight into my Babyliss Clipper, open 100% on the lever. We're gonna jump up about half an inch. And th that really depends on your client's facial features as well, as far as how high you're gonna go up. But I, I try to stay about half an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch. But we're gonna run that and like I said, we're, we're gonna try to make it as even as possible before we move on. Always flick knot at a 45 degree angle at the top. Brush it, make sure you always have that clean canvas. Close up the lever now. We're gonna jump right back to the bottom and we're gonna be switching from all the different levels on the lever. So make sure you go back and forth. And again, you're gonna see me go, you know, up and down, just really achieving what I want before we move on to the next section. So again, I like to start from the bottom and work my way up. And we're always gonna work back and forth, but you can see I'm gonna be working with the corner of my teeth there, and that's gonna help you get that section right behind the ear, but also it's just gonna help you, you know, really find detail your haircut. Do any of you guys use these, um, you know, cordless chargers by Toon45? I just started using them about, I believe about three weeks to a month ago, but I love these. You know, I don't have to deal with wires anymore, but back to the video, we're gonna jump to my Supra ZR detachable clipper um, with the one and a half blade. And we're gonna jump up about an inch but we're gonna be flicking out 45 degrees. But if you so happen to be using guards, you can use a one and a half guard. It's basically the same thing. I just personally prefer using detachable blade clippers. A lot faster and I don't really have to stroke it as much. Um, but again, I, I'm trying to keep this round. Um, at the top, as you see, it's kind of rounded. We're not going straight all the way up. We wanna keep that section behind the ear still dark. You know, we don't want to create a whole blend all the way to the top and that's just going to make it look weird. But after I finish with this one and a half, I'm going to throw the one eight blade and now we're going to work that line there out. And the one eight, it is a little bit longer than the one blade, but if you're using uh, guards, the one eight is equivalent to a one guard. You know, hopefully I'm not confusing you guys, but we're going to work this line out. But after I, you know, I'm satisfied with, the, with what I want to do here, I'm going to jump to my one blade. And that's going to really bring everything together. It's going to make that fade look clean, make it look nice, bring that nice high taper, fine tune it and perfect it. Again, we're brushing so we see what we're doing and you want to constantly brush, always brushing. Or if you have a comb, just make sure you're always brushing away that loose hair, combing away the loose hair. Um, and that's again, a big tip that it sounds like it really wouldn't make a big difference, but I kid you not, 
it's gonna make that difference, guys. So brush that loose hair off as you're cutting. There we go. That's basically where I wanted to be at. And eventually we're gonna get that thicker part out with shears, but also right now, I'm just gonna tap the tips a bit with the clip over comb method. But again, I haven't really cut the top with the scissors because we're gonna trim the top and I'm gonna save some of that piece later so I can, you know, really fine tune it with the shears. If you don't have a flat time comb, which is the one I'm using now, I highly recommend you get one because again, it's really helpful when you're doing these nice, you know, or I'm sorry, when you're doing the, the clipper over comb um, technique. Make sure you guys, if you guys don't know how to do this technique, research it, master it, and I recommend you, it's gonna save you a lot of stress save you a lot of time you know and overall you're going to be able to you know bring out a cleaner haircut within your client but now you see me using the thinning shear so and this is gonna if you don't know what thinning shears do they basically help keep that length it's going to help us keep that nice dark hair you know because we want a nice transition but we, we also want that nice dark hair but we want it to lay a bit flatter or shorter if that makes any sense so then we're gonna to jump to our liners and I have two different liners. You can see this one, this green one here, is sharper than my other one, than my balding clipper. Um, but we're gonna line up the back, nice and round, get behind the ears. And here's another big tip, guys. So I, you guys do need at least two outliners. You know, I, I recommend using one for your, for your balding and then one for your outlining because I used to use just one, you know, trimmer for both and I realized that Obviously the one where you're balding with is gonna become dull a lot faster and you wanna have one that's always hitting super sharp when you do outlines. As you can see in the video, I'm cleaning up his neckline, getting it ready. And now I'm gonna speed up the video a bit, just for the sake of the video, but obviously I'm doing the same thing I did to the other side. There we go. Back with our outliners getting behind the ear and that's fire, that's what we want. And again, I'm doing this haircut on my regular work week. So that's why you see us having a nice conversation, but back to the video here, I wet his hair and we're just gonna take about a quarter inch off, a quarter to half an inch using my seven inch shears. As you can see, he has this really bad cowlick right at the top. So we wanna be very careful with clients like these because if you take it down too short, that hair is just gonna stick up. Um, you take it too short, too short, and it doesn't really matter how much product you put on it, it's gonna stick up. So now, you know, I'm gonna be switching back and forth with my clip over comb, and also just a regular shear method. But the bottom there, I really wanna taper it so it's kind of gets shorter right around the neckline so we can achieve a sharper neckline. He doesn't like his hair to hang over at the bottom, so this is why I'm doing this. We're going back to that section there, which still looks heavy. First of all, we're just gonna trim the top first, and then we're, we're gonna hit that section back again. That's a very tough section of his, so you're, every time I cut a hair, I just seem to somehow go back and forth. But that's all right, guys. You know, it honestly takes a while for us to master you know, some of our clients here, because let's be honest, like we're, we're always learning and you should be always learning and always trying to progress and, and work on your, your client's haircuts. Taking a lot of this bulk out on the right side and that's his hair comes over to the right. So we're going to try to be careful with that area, cutting a little bit at a time. Again, take your time, you know, no rush. No rush, your client really appreciates when you take your time too. There we go. So I'm happy with that. This is what we're gonna roll with. Now we're gonna do the lining. I didn't get the best angle for this um, just because we were trying to, you know, I was running out of time. And honestly, I still haven't set up a, a right way to set up my camera, so 
<laughs> Sorry for this. Next time I'll get you guys a better video as far as like doing the lining. But we're just going to lightly touch it again. He doesn't like a super sharp lining, so we're just going to keep it as natural as possible while still making it real nice. Now we're going to fade the beard. We're going to start at the zero or, you know, that the clippers close and then we're going to work our way backwards. So we're essentially doing a reverse taper on the beard. And if you're re really new at doing this, take your time because it's just so easy to mess up and you don't want to take that you know, section or you don't want to take it bald all the way down because then you're just going to have to get rid of his beard. But that's perfect right there. Now we're going to jump to the razor and again, very subtle line and we don't, he doesn't like being pushed back and again, we just, we just on something clean. You know, not everyone's haircut has to be sharp all the time. Me personally, I prefer a nice natural hairline. Now we're going to take the one and a half blade on the Super ZR and we're going to take his beard down. You know, he likes that stubble look. He doesn't like it really dark. But I also, if you have a clients that have like really patchy beards, I just recommend taking it down to stubble level because sometimes, especially as you can see, my client has a very light um, complexion. And let's say you have really dark hair like his, that skin to hair contrast is really gonna bring out the patchy spots. So I always recommend doing the stubble on light complexion people, especially if they have dark hair. Now we're gonna do the next side and we're gonna just work our way through it, make sure everything's nice and even before we proceed to line it up and clean it up with the razor. Especially with the beard, I take my time because I you obviously wanna be very gentle with the face. You know, you, want to, you don't want to be as rough as you would be with the hair because you, don't, you want to keep your client comfortable. And that's just, should go without saying. Now I'm going to throw the 1A blade on the mustache in that little chin section right behind the lip. And for some reason, we always have darker hair on our mustache. It always just seems more dense there. So to keep it all looking even, I always like to take it a level lower than what I did on the beard. And that's a big tip that I give you guys on the mustache. I'm always go a level lower than what you did on the beard. And it just helps to make it look clean. And again, you don't want to run this system where it's like, oh, you know, I'm just going to run a, number, a one and a half everywhere. No, you want to, first of all, just make sure all the hair looks even as far as the, the shade. And again, we're going to take our liners. We're going to leave it about uh, a little bit above mid neck. Especially with a rounder face, you don't want to cut it right at the jawline. You know, we tap the lip there. Now we're going to take our other liners, which this one is my, my balding, you know, quote unquote balding clipper. And we're going to take all that out. And also these aren't as sharp. So again, I like to use these because if I were to do what I'm doing now with, with the other trimmers, but you know, they would really irritate their skin. So I have two trimmers and I recommend you would get two trimmers keep one a little bit dull not so much dull but you know keep one zero gap and the other one just leave it standard factory as if you will now we're going to get the other side and i'm going to really just gently knock some of that hair out with this clipper just very gently but i saw it was a bit too rough so i'm, I'm just going to switch back to the other one and complete it Getting it nice and even before we throw the Babyliss Pro Foil Shaver on it. What do you guys prefer as far as, you know, shaving the neckline? Because I know the foil just makes it easier. I know some of you guys like to shave, but the reason why I use the foil here is because I have two separate services. One, I do charge more if I'm going to shave the neckline because one, it just takes more time and it's just more preparation, especially when the hair is just so thick down there. And also it's a sensitive area, so you can't really rush it. So for me, I like to separate those two services. So you can see here, he got a, the basic service, so I'm just throwing the shaver on there, which still does a great job, don't get me wrong. He had one stubborn hair there, so I just knock it out real quick with the shaver, I'm sorry, with the razor. And then we're back with the shaver. Let's complete the job, brush the hair off. And again, brush any loose hair off. And let's get that nice and shaved, guys.
if you're one of those guys that you feel rushed every time you do a haircut because maybe on your services you have you know a half hour maybe 25 minutes a haircut and you know you're over here stressing because you're you're just trying to get to the next guy but I, I recommend just give yourself about even 10 more minutes um, take your time and just really taking your time is gonna help you achieve just a better haircut you're gonna be more clear-minded and you're gonna be able to concentrate more on, on just giving out a better product better quality we're gonna take our razor here and you can see we're just taking off that cheek hair it does have like that bald patch there so we're just gently you know we're, we don't want it too sharp because if we were to make it too sharp on his beard we would have to make it a chin strap which is not the look we're going for so we're going to stop about half an inch under the corner of the lip as you can see get that nice C shape and the mustache we're just gonna tap it again we're just we don't want that skinny you know prince mustache we just want to get it nice and clean make sure to get all that cheek hair as well we're gonna get that chin hair just a few hairs again we're going for a natural look a clean natural look i should say Back with the shavers, getting that little section there, fine tuning any little areas we see. Again, if you if you like my content so far, make sure to subscribe. You know, I really appreciate it, and that just tells me that I'm doing a good job and that you guys are enjoying it. And I, I'll be more happy to, to release more content for you. If you guys want to see something in particular, again, you guys can throw a recommendation in the in the comment section. Don't be shy, guys. I'm down to do whatever. Again, I didn't get the best uh, angle here just because one, we were talking, so I did get distracted. Um, I'm going to put this clay on his hair. And you can see I, I cut the piece of the glove there when I was doing the shear work. But we're going to just rub it all over his hair. And let me give you a quick tip. After you rub it in, grab your blow dryer and just blow, dry just a little bit just to warm up the product make sure it gets nice and saturated and you're gonna see me do this in a sec so make sure first you get that all the way in there make sure it's all nice and even grab your blow dry and you don't have to have it at the highest setting just make sure you kind of melt that product into his hair just a little bit not too much because then it can kind of deactivate the product so just just a little bit then we're gonna grab our vent brush and we're just gonna brush it and just give it a nice clean look nothing too crazy not too much texture just a nice smooth you know nice clean look make sure we're combing that cowlick down there you go beautiful nice and round that's exactly what we're looking for As you can see this is what we did before this is a before and then boom I'm gonna show you the after right there let me know what you guys think about this haircut. Um, we've been seeing this mullet make a comeback the past one or two years. And honestly, I love it. As long as you perform it right, you approach it right. This haircut can be great. Like the mullet doesn't have to be this dirty look that a lot of people for some reason think about when they think about a mullet. But anyways, any, every haircut can be great as long as it's performed right. Um, I'm gonna wrap the video up right there. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you like it, subscribe, leave a comment for any recommendations, and I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.